Happy Monday morning, Mentees. This is the Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition. And join me today as I not only take an advanced look at the Astonishing X-Man Omnibus reprint, but also do a comparison with the original printing of the Omni. So, please stay tuned. As always, before I get started, I'd like to thank David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this Omnibus. This Omnibus comes out on April 8th. So keep that in mind. This is a advanced review. So, from the looks of it, at least from the front cover, this is identical to the original printing. By the way, before I go any further, there is a direct market version coming out too, for the first time, because the first printing did only had one cover. So there is going to be a direct market version. That's what it looks like over there. It's also drawn by John Cassidy. Now, let's talk about the differences here, just from the covers on the outside of the book. This new printing, as you can probably tell, is a lot thinner. Now that's because of two things that I'll talk about here in a little bit. Here is a different angle so you can see that difference in the thickness. The one on top is the new printing and the original printing is at the bottom. The back also looks very similar but a little bit different. They're using new font in the new printing and of course uh, it's got a different ISBN number because even though it's a reprint, it has to have a new number in order for bookstores to stock it back up and, the, and, then, and for the catalog. Uh, the other big difference that I've pointed out earlier uh, when I was doing the solicitations is that the price has gone up to $100 from $75. Now, that's the very first time I've seen that happen on a reprint. For the most part, Marvel has kept their reprints the exact same price. But I get it because we've had books with less pages than this for the same amount. So this is now $100. The original price was 75. Now that is the only differences we can see from the outside. Let's look at it under the dust jacket. Okay, so the original one has of course this kind of uh, fake leather look to it and the big silver X right there. Astonishing X-Men. The new printing has this amazing image of, I believe this is from Giant Size X-Men number one where the story wrapped up. Okay, let's open this up. I'll be doing a little more comparison in a few minutes so blue and pages i believe that's what the original printing had and here we have the credits now we can see them a lot better i've seen some of these credits for the collected editions department they're so hard to read but here we have jennifer grunwald caitlin o'connell Kateri woody mark beasley jeff youngquist the people that put this book together and of course david gabriel these are all the people responsible for reprinting this wonderful book Okay, so it kicks off with the same thing, X-Men 101, kind of give you a quick rundown on the history of X-Men, and I mean quick, but it is essential to enjoying the story. Now, one more thing before we go any further, if you're reading this in chronological order, this happens after the events of Grant Morrison's new X-Men. So if you have that new X-Men omnibus, you want to jump in right to this. Oh, God. Yeah, I can't, I, I'm sorry, I know I don't do reviews of books, but this is up there in my top 10 favorite X-Men stories ever. Joss Whedon's Astonishing X-Men. It is phenomenal. So let's go back to the new X-Men though. So new X-Men, Grant Morrison's new X-Men happened. Then the line goes back and starts being called X-Men again. And I'll do, I'll talk about this uh, in detail when I do a, a comprehensive reading order of the X-Men and collected editions again. That'll probably be at the end of the year when Uncanny X-Men 4 comes out though. So keep an eye on the channel for that. Um, but regardless, New X-Men became X-Men again, and then Uncanny um, kept going as well. So then we had three X-Men titles. This was the new title, Astonishing X-Men. And who they got to write this was Joss Whedon. Joss Whedon was famous for writing Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Not only the TV show, but the movie. Of course, Twister, Toy Story, things like that. But they got him to come in and write this. As a matter of fact, he has always based the character of Buffy the Vampire Slayer a little bit on Kitty Pride, who was his favorite character. So we knew he was going to use Kitty Pride. Uh, the X-Men had been wearing this... Actually, I want to point this page out when I do a comparison here in a little bit. The X-Men had been wearing these leather black outfits for uh, the entire run of New X-Men by Grant Morrison. So Whedon brought it back to the classic outfits. And joining Whedon is this phenomenal artist right here, John Cassidy. Uh, John Cassidy's the guy that did a lot of the uh, planetary stuff. He came from Wildstorm. And then he also did a run on Captain America, too. And his art, he has this uh, very realistic art. I know I hate to say, like, realistic when we're talking about people that can pop claws out or fly or turn into giant beasts. But he does have this realistic look to his art. Now, 
from the covers and from me flipping through the pages there are some things that might be spoiled for you so just uh please keep that in mind uh, such as there's a character that joins the team that had been dead for a while and as i'm flipping through here i'm not gonna say who it is but i have to show a couple of scenes with the character so and the return was one of the most powerful and emotional moments for me because i remember i was reading it in the car as my girlfriend at the time was driving and she's like why are you tearing up and i'm like because x-men is beautiful again i will never forget that moment the return of that character and I have to mention this uh, amazing moment right here. This is one of the highlights of this book is when Wolverine turns around to Colossus and he's like, I got two words for you. He doesn't even have to say fastball special. How badass is that? Oh my God. The entire run has a lot of classic moments. And okay, not doing a review of the book, but I did want to point out how much I do love that. Um, you know, it starts off really strong with the first six issues, I think. Kind of uh, goes, takes a little bit of a dip during the Danger Saga, but then picks back up towards uh, the middle of the book and then towards the end of the book. Of course, it's always John Cassidy drawing it. This book was notorious for having a lot of delays, unfortunately, because of his artwork. Um, as a matter of fact, I think they just went ahead and did a giant size issue to finish out the storyline. If you've never read this, you owe it to yourself. If you're a fan of X-Men and have never read this, oh my gosh, by far one of the best X-Men stories ever. Ever. For anybody that I know that has read it. Uh, let's look through a little more here. And I've mentioned already that this does have a smaller page count compared to some Omnis. This is 672 pages, so that is something to keep in mind. It does collect every one of the issues, though. It has issues 1 through 24, and then the wrap-up issue, which is issue of the giant size, uh, Astonishing X-Men, number one. That's where the story wraps up. So we're getting here towards the end. I don't want to flip too much through here. I just wanted to showcase some of this wonderful artwork by John Cassidy. And we'll talk a little bit about the binding of the book and the differences between this and the original printing. But let's go to the back here for extras. Okay, so we have variant covers back here. And yeah, it's just a gallery of variants. I want to say Astonishing was one of the first titles I remember having like a variant every month. Love that. Oh, I miss this team. I wish they would come back. Oh, that's right. Um, and Joss Whedon also wrote a couple stories in Giant Size X-Men 3 and 4, I want to say. And those were penciled by Neil Adams, if I'm not mistaken. Originally supposed to be Dave Cochran, but he got sick. So this is the planning emails. This is really awesome to see. The behind the scenes. I love this kind of stuff. The sketches and character designs by John Cassidy. When designing Wolverine's astonishing outfit. The villain here. And... Okay, this is what they use for the cover. This is the Unstoppable. I think this is the it's the first arc, but it's also the trade paperback cover, if I'm not mistaken. More of a spotlight interview with John Cassidy. And then the bookend pages. Now, let's do some comparison really quick. The other thing I noticed was the different fonts in the new printing in the French flaps and the original printing of the French flaps. Let's talk about this binding. This is the original printing and this is the new printing. The new printing is done by Leo Papers. And one of the things that I've noticed that they've been doing is this right here, um, towards the beginning and towards the ending of the books that they've been printing, such as the case of uh, Power Pack or Peter David's Omnibus, the Hulk Omnibus, they've had this thing called a, well, I guess what some people call a gutter curve, which gives you a little bit of gutter loss when you're looking at it. In the original printing, you can clearly see that that's Kitty Pride. In the new printing, you have to push down a little bit to see her face. And this is, well, I'll sh show a couple more examples here. And I'm just showing examples towards the beginning of the books, by the way, not the middle of the books where it gets completely fine. Again, this is the new printing, the original printing. You can tell the curve right here. Again, I wanna showcase one of my favorite moments of this book. Uh, the original printing, the new printing of the book by Leo Papers. Uh, the original printing, honestly, is almost a little too much. Like, the paper is just breaking away from the spine. And then this is the new printing, which isn't bad. Like I mentioned, as you get further on in the book, it's the gutter loss is a lot better because there's no longer that curve. One more thing I wanted to note is the paper quality. Um, because that's what makes this book also a 
thinner than this one. And the paper quality, just like in most Omnis printed during this time, was a lot thicker than the paper quality here. Not that this is really thin, like in the case of Infinity uh, oversized hardcover or anything, but you do notice a little bit of a difference. It's just a little thinner than this, and which makes the book obviously look thinner in the spine. Just a couple more comparisons, old printing, new printing. Um, I, I do want to point this out, not to put just a pure focus on it on the whole video, but because I do want to do a thorough overview of the book, and I know some things like this bother some people. Like I said, not that bad. To me, not a deal breaker. It's not that big of a deal. Let's look at the binding. If you've been watching my advanced views or overviews, you've noticed that lately since Power Pack um, and a little bit of the Peter David Hulk Omnibus, that this eye isn't as big as it used to be and it is still sewn binding and it is still over to fold over really nice like like we're looking at the very first few pages right here and it's folding over nice the only difference is that you like i said with this curve it's a bigger curve you get a little bit of gutter loss towards the beginning and towards the ending but as i mentioned before to me, at least, this is not a deal breaker. It's a beautiful book. It's one of the best X-Men stories ever written. If you've never read it, you owe it to yourself to read it. It's wonderful, it's perfect, and it's all collected in this omnibus. Now, when this book comes out, you can purchase it from CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now this is only for US customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. Now that was the contents of the book, the build of the book, and the page count. Let me know in those comments down below if you're excited to pick this up, if you already own the first printing and you're passing up on it, or if you've never read this and you're going into it blind. As I've mentioned during this entire thing, I cannot hold how happy I am that this is being, as I mentioned through the entire overview, uh, just about, I can't help but hold in how content I am that they finally reprinted this. This is probably one of the best X-Men stories ever and I'm glad that people get to read it for the first time. Please don't forget to hit that like subscribe button. Uh, don't forget to hit the notifications button to let you know when our videos are going live. Remember if you want to win this particular copy don't forget to enter the contest that was posted on Saturday. The guess the 300th Marvel Masterwork. So comment on that video if you want a chance at winning this. And remember, if it's classy and cool, it must be near mint.